Okay, welcome back. Uh, we are currently on section uh, 4-2, and we're continuing our journey through the quadratic function. And uh, today we're looking at uh, vertex form and intercept form, two different kinds of uh, forms for quadratic functions, just different ways you can write them, but they result in the same thing. The first is the vertex form, and it's very similar to what we learned about in absolute values, in that y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And when we're looking at that vertex, we're again looking at h, k as our vertex. So that's, that's that high point or that low point. When you look at intercept form, what we're talking about there is the x and the y intercepts, or, or the, the not the x and the y intercepts, just the different x intercepts uh, that you have. And intercepts form looks like this. x equals a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. And what that means is when you graph that parabola, if it crossed here at 2 and it crossed here at negative 3, that would be your p and your q, and we'll learn about that in just a moment. If we take a look at the graph of the vertex y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, um, it, it is translated horizontally h units and vertically k units. That's where that that vertex moves. Uh, so obviously the vertex is going to be hk as we talked about. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h. And the graph opens up if a is positive and down if a is negative, just like in the, uh, the previous one. Um, if we take uh, a look, look at what that might mean on the graph, if we just look at this example right here, we see that h would be negative 1 and k is going to be negative 2. I guess they have little spots for me here. Negative 1, negative 2, and a is 1 half. So if I go to that place, negative 1, negative 2, uh, that gives me my vertex. And then um, when, I, when I place uh, the axis of symmetry over top of it, so maybe I'll change colors real quick and do my axis of symmetry. Uh, as that axis of symmetry comes down here, that's exactly where that thing's going to be split in half. And what I want to do is maybe evaluate uh, the, uh, the functions for a couple of different values of x. And so if I put 1 in there for x, over here I'll write that y equals 1 half times 1 plus 1 squared minus 2. Well, 2 squared is 4. Half of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2, y equals 0. So I have the point 1, 0 right here. Well, if this is symmetrical and I have a point at 1, 0 and it's 2 over from here, then I go 2 over this way, I have a point there. And therefore, my graph's going to look like As I take a look at page 2 here, um, if I want to graph something in intercept form, then the x-intercepts are going to be p and q, as I said earlier. And the axis of symmetry is halfway between uh, p0 and q0. So what you do is you just add the p and the q together, and you divide by 2. Remember, if a is greater than 0, it opens up. And if a is less than 0, it opens down. That's, that seems to be a pattern, right? So um, my x-intercepts in this one uh, would be 1 and 5. Remember, they're just the opposite of how they might look. Because it's x minus p, then it's a positive 1. It's x minus q right here. So we got a positive 5. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a dot there. And our axis of symmetry is going to be that number that's right in between 1 and 3, or 1 and 5, which is 3. 
and so that makes sense. Um, when the the uh, the place where I would go is on that three, so if you do one plus five and six divided by two is three, I would take three and plug it back into the original and see what you get. Negative two, three minus one, three minus five, and I get negative two times two times negative two. So it looks like I'm going to end up with a positive eight here. And so I'm going to have a vertex at three, eight. And so I go three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there goes my graph, just like that. You go ahead and pause the video and take just a moment to, uh, to try questions one and two on your notes and, uh, and see how those go. Alright, hopefully you took a moment and, uh, and you tried those. And if you didn't, I guess you're just going to hang out and watch me try them and see, and see how we do together. So remember, we can't always graph these on our calculator, but we're just practicing doing it by hand to see what we might come up with as an answer here. So on number one, we had an HK of 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. That was our axis of symmetry right on 3. So the line went right down the middle there. And when we look at what other points would we have, well, we can just choose a point that we like. Um, a point might, that might be easy, might be something like x equals 0. Um, uh, so, so let's try that one. Let's see, let's see where that ends up. If we do x equals 0, we have y equals negative 0 minus 3 squared plus 4. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is uh, 9. So negative 9 plus 4, because that minus drops down. Negative 9 plus 4 is uh, negative 5. Well, that wasn't a really good point, was it? Um, so we're going to go all the way down here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We've got a dot down here. And it's 1, 2, 3 away. One, two, three away this way is my symmetrical dot. And the graph looked like that. Hopefully your graph looked like mine, but maybe you picked different points. On this one here, it looks like I have a uh, intercept at four, two, four. Look, they're in twos there. And negative two. Be careful of that one because it says x plus two. That's a, it's a negative two. Um, so we have a dot there. What's right in between four and negative two? Well, 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2 is going to be 2 divided by 2, or 1. So I have an axis of symmetry right here at 1. If I find that vertex, then I got the problem all done. So I put my 1 in, and I get 1 minus 4 times 1 plus 2. I get negative 3 times 3. I get a negative 9. 2, 4, 6, 8. Here's my negative 9. Looks like that. Hopefully your graph looked like mine. And on that last page of your notes in section 4-2, uh, don't forget about the FOIL method. Just a refresher from, uh, from algebra, from 7th grade and 8th grade. We talked about FOIL a lot. First, outsides, insides, last. And so real quick uh, refresher on that. We're going to leave that 3 on the outside. We have first, x times x is x squared. Outsides, x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Insides, plus 2x and negative 10. x squared, minus 3x, minus 10. And then you give it a whoop, whoop, whoop. 3x squared, minus 9x minus 30. Don't forget about the FOIL method. I'm sure you can look up the FOIL method online if you did forget and, and there will be a lot of people that are going uh, to talk about the first terms, the outsides, the insides, and the last. But uh, again, major review from what we've done in the past. 
down here, if it says x plus 2 squared, well, what does that have to do with the FOIL method? Well, that's x plus 2 times x plus 2. One of the biggest mistakes I see is when you call x plus 2 squared x squared plus 2 squared. That is wrong. You have to split the x plus 2 and the x plus 2. Again, first x squared, outsides 2x, insides 2x, last 4. And then you give it a, you combine your like terms here, x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then whoop, 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 negative 5x squared minus 20x minus 20. Combine your like terms, and you get negative 5x squared minus 20x minus 12. And then that would be your answer. A lot of different ways to go about that, a lot of different ways to attack that. Uh, I want you guys to work on 3 and 4, and, we'll, and we will uh, discuss those to, tomorrow in class. Um, thank you very much, folks, and we will see you tomorrow. The answer is here, just by the way, just for a quick check. Without the work is 4x squared minus 24x plus 26. And this one here, y equals negative 3x squared plus 3x plus 126. I'll be looking for work on each of these problems when I see you in class tomorrow. Don't forget, look this stuff up online. Lots of good websites out there. Have a good day.